We came up here in the mid-1970s and started building ourselves a little uh, house across the lake. You don't really see for a start off until suddenly they explode above the tussock and the hebes and you realise, oh golly, it's a forest. And that was really what touched me. Winning this battle takes a collaborative effort, both nationally and locally. You cannot win in one area and lose in another. Ultimately, we would all lose. Queenstown is set within a world-class landscape and environment. We're the sixth largest district in New Zealand. We currently have a, well, I think we're right up about 660,000, which goes from high country down to the lakes. We really do take a very close eye as guardians about looking after the way that we present the landscape in this district. And if you ever sat around a table saying, help, where do we go from here? <laughs> There was a strategy back in 2012 which had a recommendation in it to set up a um, community group which could then apply for external funding which was available, whereas previously it was just small amounts of funding from Dock and QLDC. The WCG and all the partners that build into it, it's, it's a massive scale operation. Council alone invests half a million dollars per annum as a grant. It's a serious amount of business that goes through this program. 73,000 hectares of infested land. This is some task and it's going to take the community to be on board. One of the real positives has been adopt a plot. Not everyone can come up here on a Saturday or a Sunday. So we came up with the idea, why don't we get people to adopt an area and they can own it and keep it clear. To control wild and conifers around the Wakatipu, we have to employ various different methods depending on the site. A big factor is often just the, the terrain. You know, the Wakatub is famous for its mountains, and of course that has a flow-on effect to the, trying to traverse across those to get from one gully to the next to cut a tree. And there's lots of different tools in the toolbox. Aerial contractors, ground contractors, spray contractors, and there's backup scientific monitoring as well. So there's no hard and fast rule of how we do it. And that comes back to the project management, the scoping out, the planning. So there's a huge amount of safety requirements. We've got best practice guides on a national scale that guide us through the right approach. We've got EPA requirements and we've got environmental standards. And they all build that big picture. It's not just the WCG, it's what they create and also the opportunities, you know, back planting, the pest management, the animal control. Um, we truly are starting to see a difference in our biodiversity around the whole lens that that one group has started and the change we're seeing in the landscape and environment.